What a difference a new train line makes. Here is the Brightline station in Miami. Walking in, you can just tell the difference. It's bright, it's modern, it smells good. Brightline, you did that. So we're at Brightline. First impressions. It's not Amtrak. This station is cute. It's bright, it's colorful. There's a place to get juice and coffee. It's clean. It smells so fresh. Tickets. There's self service tickets. I love it. Already. Good experience so far. Let's see if that changes. Oh, Jesus. Almost killed myself. <laughs> And if you're in Miami, the Miami Day Transit connects to Brightline so you can get around if you're staying in downtown. If not, well, you're kind of screwed. Get a food hall first? Cool. Is this <laughs> Ta da! They're closed on a Friday. Okay. Bum, bum, bum. Bathrooms are also not bright light or Amtrak. The bathrooms are clean, smell great. Amtrak, I was scared I was gonna catch something. That smell, I need it in my hand. Smell that? It's a very lemony, citrusy, sweet. Let's check out. The Miami Brightline train station also has plenty of seating area, places to charge your phones, tablets, all your gadgets. It also has food venues, clean bathrooms, and then if you're in the premium seating, you also have your own lounge that includes free food and alcoholic adult beverages. We got through security, or we went to go grab some food, and we got through security very quick. We very sat down in the lounge, it's a very nice lounge area. This is the non-premium lounge. The non-premium lounge. Because you can buy a premium with Brightline and you get your own lounge and free alcohol. Yes. And food. And um, but now we're waiting on our train. We just got an announcement there will be a, there's a five minute delay, which is better than two hour delay for Amtrak. So far, Brightline is is doing better in the whole station announcement situation, but we'll see how the rest of the trip goes. Baby. Orlando, 
You don't have as much seat in the train. Please take a moment to look at your ticket. Sure, you are seated in the correct Thank you. Thank you. Way smoother than Amtrak. Does the Wi Fi work? Yes, it is. We're already winning. I can actually do stuff on the We'll check in with you at Aventura. And we're leaving on that? What? Just two minutes. Hey y'all, uh, Manny and Sean here. Um, so we are back from vacation. Wah. And we wanted to break down the experience on Brightline kind of like we did for Amtrak. Yes. So we use the same categories we used, insert page. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be service, value for money, rel reliability, comfort, technology, and overall experience. So, um, we'll just start. Well, I guess I'll just say that Miami Station is real cute, and so is the Orlando one. <laughs> yes, um, pulling up to the station is very modern outside. Getting inside is even more so. It actually reminds me of like a modern airport. Yeah, it definitely is a modern, modern airport. Yeah. Uh, you got your little restaurants, food court stores, you can check in on kiosks, you can buy tickets on kiosks. Mm -hmm. uh, they have their little baggage check area. Um, Everything was super simple. Nobody told me I had to be here an hour before to check my bag. Um, <laughs> they clearly tell you 15 minutes before departure. <laughs> I'm still trying to find where Amtrak said an hour. Uh, the service was... I mean, I don't have any complaints. We dealt with a customer service agent with taking the bags. Um, we went through security. The lady was nice enough to scan Manny's phone as my hands were full and he went through the gate first. First um, of all, both of our hands were full. I had coffee, I had things. He had camera, but he had you things. But you literally scanned your phone. Because I put my coffee on the floor. Anyway. Um, Anyways, thank you <laughs> to the young lady that helped us. Okay. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> um, we were struggling as she saw. Security was great. I mean, it was simple. Security's quick. You throw your bag on a conveyor belt. And keep it moving. And you keep it moving. They got those scanners that automatically scan your uh, body, I guess. <laughs> Not the airport TSA one, but if something were illegal on you, obviously it would have blinked off and they would have came to you. But there's nobody there monitoring you, yeah. per se. And then service on the train was great. Yeah. Um, they had someone come ask you if you need anything, if you want snacks, water. They came through again to collect any trash. Yeah, they were consistent. It was consistent. Yeah, so service, five out of five. Five out of five for me. Uh, value for money. 
Value for money. So Brightline's pricing is higher than Amtrak's, yes. obviously. <laughs> By a lot. By a lot. Well, yeah. it depends. depends. Yeah. Because Let's put an asterisk there. They have different time slots. They leave on the hour every hour, just about. Pretty much. And so depending on when you leave, that time slot may cost a little bit more than you left a little bit earlier. Right. So we talked about in the future we'll plan maybe leaving a little earlier. Right. Or leaving a little later. Because the prices do go as low as like 49, 49. Uh, which Amtrak I believe was 38. Yeah. So let like a dollar more. Now, Brightline charges for bags. Amtrak doesn't. So that's one of the kickers because even if you get a $49 deal and you're checking a bag, that's an additional 25 bucks. Right. Now, there is a way you can take bags <laughs> on board. They have the shape and, and, and sizing of things that you can take your whole bag on board. You, didn't, you don't have to pay for it. There's a luggage rack. Um, it, it can take pretty decent sized bags. It can, and I was, we were both a little confused by that because it said that you you weren't allowed to take those big yeah. bags on there, but a lot of people did, and no one, one said anything. One of friends had a huge bag. So, I don't know. That thing went through the, yeah, he must have gone through security to. in Orlando because he took it from Orlando to Miami, and then in Miami, he decided to check it in. I Convenience, probably checking it in. Uh, I took a survey for Brightline and I said, mm, you may want to re-examine the cost of baggage. Don't be charging 25 like an airline. Now, right. from like Miami to West Palm, those type of stations, I think it's only 10 bucks. But it's the long haul from Orlando to Miami where they charge you the 25. So value, I think the value is there. You have to plan your time strategically. Is it worthy of because I feel like you can push the price a little too much comparable to Amtrak. Right, because at the time that we left, it was $99 yeah. from Miami to Orlando, which I know some people are like, that's crazy, on top of paying for a bag. Yeah. Um, there's a convenience factor here that I am leaning into, but I like you said, it, d it depends on the time slot you pick whether the value for your money is worth the convenience of not having to drive to Miami. I would give it a four and a half for value for money just because I'm a little irked about the cost of baggage. And that's, will, it has no ding to Brightline. No. It's just the pricing structure probably needs a revisit, I think. Right. And again, if you live in like smaller sections, like Fort Lauderdale to Miami, and they run like those specials all the time to get people from like entertainment venues to wherever. It's dirt cheap. It's dirt cheap. So the value there is definitely worth it. So yeah, I guess a four, a four and a half. Four and a half. Works. Reliability. Okay, reliability. So we got there on time. And the train said on time, but we did get an overhead message that it was five minutes delayed. And we were like, okay, we can deal with five minutes. Sure can. Because Amtrak, we were an hour and something delayed. 58 minutes is <laughs> Damn near two hours delayed. 48 minutes, something like that. Uh, <laughs> we'll say damn near two hours. So I can deal with a five minute delay. And it was, it didn't even seem like it, but feel like it. Uh, we left two minutes late. Yeah, that's what I tracked. As um, far as I can tell, reliability is one of their strong suits. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen mixed on that in our particular train, and it looked like the rest of the day was pretty reliable on on time. It's a train. Yeah. Uh, there was a point where we stopped somewhere along the route. Uh, I don't know if there was a train cha uh, track change or whatever, uh, which I think that pushed us back a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Because we did end up getting into Orlando, I think it was 12 minutes late. Right. But here's the kicker. It didn't take seven hours. It did not take seven hours, Amtrak. It was three hours and some change. Right. And, you know, I've seen some people ridicule the whole, like, oh, Orlando to taking Amtrak or uh, Orlando to Miami. Stupid. I'm just like, I get it. But if you're someone who doesn't want to drive to the port, 
if you're or if you're just going on vacation down there you just want to start your vacation off with no stress it's good to weigh either of these options as a transportation mechanism to get there it's the convenience for me um not only were we able to just take the train and ride it and not have to worry about anything um we were able to get work done while we were doing so so like on bright line there are yeah on bright line <laughs> there are definitely upsides to it it just depends on you know what you want the convenience of not having to, to be on an interstate or having to deal with accidents on the road or weather are all pluses yeah. uh comfort so for me the seat was comfortable uh it was not as big as amtrak but again amtrak is made for long haul mm -hmm. Now, I've seen some of Amtrak's future trains, and they look strangely familiar <laughs> to Brightline seating. Yeah. So, it might be in the new industry standard. I don't know. Today, I was on Facebook, and I saw somebody give it a 0 out of 10 for seating. For seating? Yeah. Interesting. For me, we still had decent legroom. You're a taller person. You felt... Yeah, I did not have an issue with leg space, leg room on this at all. Even with the tray table down, didn't have an issue with it. Yeah, they have a great, you have two tray tables, one for small if you have a streaming device. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they have a bigger one for your laptop if you need to do work or whatnot. Uh, so I thought the seat was comfortable. You can recline it back. I didn't feel that I needed to recline it back. I didn't even try to recline it back because I was, I was good right. where I was. <laughs> um, it had ample, well, that's technology. So I thought it was a great seat. It wasn't as cushy as maybe Amtrak is what some people might say. Again, okay, you're going three and a half hours. Mm -hmm. You don't really need that. And some people shorter than that. Right. Yeah, for, some for, people are going from Miami to Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. So. For me, like, not being comfortable is sitting in a chair for so long that my back or my butt hurts and that didn't happen and i was on this train for three hours yeah so like it was comfortable to me it was comfort to me i give it a five on comfort um uh, i don't know if bathrooms fall under comfort, comfort. i kind of want to put them under technology we'll put them under technology let's move Just on like to technology. <laughs> Um, so for one, Wi-Fi works on this one. <laughs> Wi-Fi definitely worked and it was good. It was good. It was, it was good enough to do the work that we needed to do. Even watch a YouTube video, like yeah. stream music. It was good enough. Yeah. My apps worked. Everything. And the train was, was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't like, oh, it was low usage. No, there was a lot of people on board. Um, Bathrooms on my Amtrak. It seemed like somebody cleaned it when it left New York. And nobody <laughs> had touched it again until we got to Miami. Yeah. So that could have some issue in terms of getting it from Orlando to Miami. But put the dirtiness aside. Go <laughs> with the um, bathroom on Brightline. So there's like an automatic door that opens for you. There's a big LED key light on the door when you walk in the door closes automatically for you you can press that key it will turn red to lock the door and let somebody on the outside know that someone is in the bathroom the bathroom was i was surprised by how big it was mm -hmm. yeah it's a spacious bathroom compared to amtrak's bathroom where it was just like being on a plane <laughs> yes it's, it was still a little rocky in there but i didn't feel like i was gonna die <laughs> on Amtrak, I was just like, the fuck? <laughs> At least on this one, the shaking was moderate, but I didn't feel like I was going to miss the toilet. Right. Um, <laughs> another thing was like the faucet. So it's the typical put your hand, get some soap, get the water. But they also had the hand dryer right in the sink as well, which made so much sense because... I'm like, they, why is this not the standard? It just blows the water into the sink instead of on the floor. And their terminals are like that too. So I, when I first went into the bathroom in the terminal, I was washing my hand and I guess my hand went a little too far to let the thing went... And I'm like, ah! And I'm like, oh, the blower's right here. And yeah. it's like, this is genius. Uh, more more places need to do that. They do. 
Um, so that technology for me was a five out of five. Yeah. I love the little um, LED boards above that let you know what the next station is. Um, it lets you know when the bathroom's occupied. When we'll be arriving. Like, I don't have an issue with that technology no at all. No Everything was great. Um, they also, I don't know where we would fit this, but they also have a menu where you can order sandwiches, salads. I know you talked about grabbing a water or something, but they do have full menu of food items, chips, alcoholic beverages, sodas. They're yes. Pepsi product, gross. <laughs> but um, they do have options for you uh, in that regard. And this is in uh, smart class. <laughs> if you're in premium class, which we well, were we wanted to try, but it's too expensive. Uh, you do get like free All of those things for and, free. Yeah, and you get access to a private lounge. <laughs> um, but that is their premium class. Their overall experience, even though we took a half a star away from value for money, I still say it's a five out of five. Overall experience there was a five out of five. Like from the time we got there to the time we got to Orlando, like I didn't have any issues at all. Like they give you, you check your bag, you get a, a claim. I guess that would be my one. It's not really an issue. But at Amtrak, when we got to Miami for baggage claim, mm -hmm. um, there was a person standing at the exit to make sure that your bag matched your claim so that someone couldn't just take your bag. And I understand that's a small thing. Um, on Brightline, when we got to Orlando, they kind of just put the bags out and let you get your bag, which, I mean, they kind of do that at the airport too, right? It just goes around in the carousel. Right. Anybody can come and pick it up. I know some airports are starting to check, but... Because people are stealing bags. Right. But so if I had one issue, I guess it would be that one, but it's very minuscule. Yeah. I, w I would agree with that. Overall experience, still a five though. Yeah. Um, every staff member we encountered was friendly. Mm -hmm. It's a seamless process. You use the app uh, or you can buy your tickets right there at the... They have kiosks, but they also have desk personnel. Everything's very clean. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that station smelled amazing. <laughs> they'll tell you what track you're on. Once the train is there, you go up the escalators, you go to your track, you find your seat. Very it's an assigned process. seat, uh, which Amtrak wasn't on yeah. our route. It wasn't assigned. So I think overall experience. So if you have a choice of traveling from Orlando to Miami, uh, to go on vacation, I would choose Brightline. Now, the pricing is something you gotta kind of figure out. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to arrive in a sane hour, <laughs> <laughs> I would choose Brightline. Uh, I appreciate Amtrak. Their service was great. Yes. The people were great. Uh, I appreciate free bags. I hate being nickel and dime. I would say Amtrak again if it was, you know, if you're going the day before an event or the day before you have to get somewhere, because that's the only way I would take them. Yeah, you cannot depend on them on a day, day of. of. Don't do that. Brightline is a lot more reliable. They got multiple trains going north and south. Yeah. So one of our friends that was going on the cruise missed his first train, but was able to get on the next one, still got to Miami on time. So, yeah. so. Uh, and for those of you who might be considering it along the route from Orlando to Miami that want to go to the port, uh, I can't speak for Fort Lauderdale port, but for Miami, it was like less than a 10 minute drive. Oh yeah, it was very close yeah. to so the port. <laughs> really easy if you're coming in from Orlando, go to Miami, mm -hmm. take an Uber straight to the port and you'll be there in no time. Yeah. Uh, Fort Lauderdale, it's more towards the Fort Lauderdale airport where they stop. Mm -hmm. I don't remember where the port is. It's been years. I don't know. There's talks that they may add Cocoa Beach uh, area uh, as a potential port in the near future, or not port, <laughs> train station in the near future to work with those um, cruise passengers. And then there's talk about a Tampa route. I don't know when that's coming, 2050 maybe? I don't know. We'll see when we get there. Yeah. Um, I that's our Amtrak versus Brightline. We hope you found it uh, helpful. Helpful. <laughs> if you have any questions for us on either of the two, we'd be happy to chime in and answer for you. Uh, just leave your comments below. 
uh, and we'll be happy to uh, answer those for you. Yeah, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more travel adventures, vlogs, and information like this video. Yeah. And uh, if you like podcasts, you can find us on all streaming platforms and YouTube uh, to hear our podcast. Maybe you can watch it on your Brightline uh, <laughs> adventure because Amtrak may not have Wi Fi. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks for joining us, y'all. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye. Don't forget, it's Amtrak versus Brightline. If you missed our Amtrak video, check it out here.